There's this myth that you may have heard that you can't game on Linux. But of course, we've got Steam. There's many games in here that have native Linux support. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, the Nintendo 64, that was one of the golden ages of gaming, back when games were actually good before microtransactions and stream snipers and releasing a half-finished game only to sell DLCs for it a few months later. Well, what if I told you that we could bring back those glory days of Nintendo 64 gaming on your Linux machine with an emulator? Yes, I am talking about Mupin 64 Plus, that's M-U-P-E-N 64 P-L-U-S. And it should be in the repository for most Debian-based distros. It's also in the Gentoo repository, and it can be installed on Arch-based distros through the AUR. So once you have this installed, you're going to have the MUPEN64 plus command available to you. And essentially, all you really have to do is point this to a ROM file that you've downloaded from the internet, and the game will start up. Now, you might have to do some additional, additional configuration to get things like full screen working properly, because by default, these games are going to start in a window mode. And when I went to full screen, all of a sudden my games wouldn't launch. And you can fix that by editing your mupin 64 pluscfg file which is going to be located in this directory here, .config, mupin64+, and then of course mupin64plus.cfg. So go into that and you want to look for the line that says video plugin. And I just have it commented out, but this is what it is by default. So it's this mupin 64 plus video rice.so either delete that line or comment it out and then change it to this one, Mupin64 plus Video Glide 64 If you end up changing it to full screen and for whatever reason, uh, it doesn't actually launch the game properly. Now, another option to go about using this emulator, if you don't feel comfortable running this as a terminal program and editing things in the way that I just showed you, uh, you can actually use a few different GUI front ends that can be installed for this emulator like Mupin64 plus Qt. And I'll show you what those tools look like because it's, um, you know, for a lot of people it's just going to be easier to do that. And I'm not going to lie, even I kind of prefer to use this Qt front end for it as well. So that's what this looks like. And to change your settings using the GUI, you can just go into settings and configure. And then if you come over here to plugins, this video plugin is the same area uh, that we just changed by vimming into the file. So by default, it's gonna be this video rice. You can change it to glide 64, just like that. And again, this is just a plugin. So, I mean, this is just a front end. So. If you make any changes through the terminal, they're going to show up inside of this front end as well. So that just about covers the basics of the emulator itself. Uh, so now we want to get some games to actually play in here. So you can head over to emulatorsgames, emulatorgames.net and go to their ROMs and Nintendo 64 page and then there's a bunch of different games that you can play on this emulator. I've already downloaded this one, Perfect Dark, because, well, this was one of my favorite games to play. If you had Nintendo 64 and you didn't play Perfect Dark, I feel sorry for you because that was literally the best game that they had for the Nintendo 64. But hey, now you have a chance to play it on Linux with this emulator. So once you've got that downloaded, usually they come in a zip file or something like that. Just go ahead and unpack them to a folder and you can launch it in the emulator by going to file, open ROM, and I have it inside of this folder here. So then we have perfect dark. And we'll let that launch up.
So this might look a little weird because it's going to be upscaled. I think originally this game was developed in like 480p or 480i, and so it's running on a 1080p screen. But it's the nostalgia factor that makes this so good. Ah, uh, yes, it's just like how I remember it. Hey, don't leave me elevator. And as you saw, there's a bunch of other games that are available for this. I think I might end up getting Rayman 2 as well, because I had that game when I was a kid for the Nintendo 64, but the thing about Rayman 2 is, if you didn't have a video card, or a memory card rather, it was very difficult to actually beat it. Because the whole game, I wanna say, would take maybe five hours to complete, even if you were speed running it. And I almost never had that much time to actually finish it. So I got close to the end, but I never did actually end up finishing that game. So maybe I'll play it through since now I can obviously save it anywhere I want on my PC. Um, oh, so one other thing that I wanna show you guys, um, cause when you're playing games like Perfect Dark, for example, uh, I was playing it with my Xbox controller and I had to remap almost all of the keys because by default, the key bindings were just really, really silly. So let me show you how to do that really quick. So you'll want to grab this other program called JS Test GTK. And this is also available in the Debian repository so you can just apt-get install it. And what this is going to do is it's going to show you what all of your buttons map to on your controller. Because if we go into Moopin 64 plus, and I think it's configure. Um, no, that's not it. Okay, so it's settings edit moopin 64 pluscfg And you can do this through the terminal as well, but I'm just, like I said, I'm gonna show you guys in the uh, GUI how to do this. So if you scroll down to input SDL control, this is where you can remap all of the different buttons. So you can see that it defines things like um, the A button as button zero. Well, what, so what this is, is this is taking the controls of a Nintendo 64 controller. Cause like I've got an Xbox 360 controller and obviously there is no Z trigger on the 64. That was basically a trigger that was on the underside of the controller, almost like a gun trigger. So I've got that remapped to axis two, which I believe is my left trigger. Yeah, my left trigger, axis two and positive. So the different axis keys or the different axis buttons, those are pretty much all of the analog. Well, technically everything on this is analog, but it's um, things like your joysticks and then your triggers. Those are all gonna be axis because you can push them part of the way like this instead of just doing it all the way. And then things like your A button and your X button B and Y, those are going to register over here as different buttons. So use this to essentially figure out what is what, and you can just write out what all of your different buttons do. So that's what I've got here. Um, I would assume that it's gonna be the same thing if you're using an Xbox 360 controller. So maybe I'll leave this in the description to save you guys who have that set up some time from having to play with this thing like I did. Uh, but yeah, you can basically do that and then you can translate that over here to put in whatever buttons you want to use for specific keys. And I pretty much have a setup that I think I'm pretty comfortable with using. The only other thing that I got to do is 
I think lower the sensitivity because certain things in game like aiming is still really wacky. Like it seems like it seems like my crosshair just flies all over the screen when I'm aiming. So maybe I'll dull down the sensitivity there a little bit so that I can really play this game. But yeah, there you go. A couple of small programs and you can basically play every Nintendo 64 game there ever was on Linux. Who says you can't game on here?